Returning to my desk, an on site caught my eye. Next to my desk, in the trash bin, there was a lunchbox discarded. Even I couldn't keep silent, raising my voice. Who did this? Who would do such a thing? An employee nearby gave me a meaningful look without saying a word. I told you, didn't I? Please eat your homemade lunches outside, and yet, you bring them inside. It stinks, so I threw it in the trash. Said my boss, Kent. At Kent's words, my anger turned to sheer disbelief. Before I could even think of how to explain this, the person I had an appointment with appeared. Sorry to interrupt your fun conversation, Max. Has the promised item arrived? It's been a while, so I've been looking forward to it since this morning and worked hard, said the director, Ray, standing behind me. Kent, noticing Ray standing behind, hurriedly stood up. My name is Max. I've been working at this company for 25 years. I thought I had been working diligently at one company, but having lost in the promotion race, I am still a regular employee. However, I live surrounded by my supportive wife and beloved daughter, so I have no particular complaints about my current life. If I were to wish for more, it would be to get promoted to provide more for my family's budget, especially since my daughter started university this year, and to give my family a better life. Though that's what I wish for, reality doesn't always follow suit. It seems the promotion went to my colleague, Kent, and from April, I will be working under him. For the first few months, Kent, being new to the post, interacted with us with humility. However, gradually, his demeanor began to change. He started to lord over us, outright insulting and belittling our character, and we couldn't keep up. Kent often targeted younger employees, but increasingly he became aggressive towards me, once a drinking buddy. Hey, Max, the documents for this afternoon's meeting are ready, right? I haven't seen the draft yet, he said. His words dripping with condescension. Despite the unpleasant feeling, I said to Kent honestly, No, I wasn't even informed there's a meeting this afternoon. Kent was now my superior. Feeling awkward about my own words, I nevertheless responded to Kent politely. Right after my words, a loud noise erupted. Kent had kicked his desk. Then, he shouted with spittle flying. What are you talking about? It's because of your lack of task management that you're still a regular employee at your age. Listen, just to make it clear once more, there's a meeting at 2 p.m. today to discuss upward revisions of future business performance. You need to propose topics to improve productivity. You need to have looked at the preliminary documents by 1 p.m. It's crucial since people from other departments will be there too. Make sure it's done on time. Caught off guard by the sudden outburst, I was stunned. Glancing at the clock, its hands pointed at 9 a.m. No matter how fast I worked, the documents would be incomplete. I had to suggest we work on it together with Kent. Then, he made an unbelievable statement. Well then, I'm counting on you. I'm off for a cigarette break and won't be back for a while. I need to recharge for the big job this afternoon. He said, slipping a cigarette into his breast pocket and leaving the room. Kent's cigarette breaks had always been long. But since his promotion to manager, they became even worse, sometimes not returning during working hours. Today, of all days, he likely won't return until noon. I sighed deeply, seeing my pathetic reflection on the computer screen. I scrambled to gather the necessary data and create a logical, proposal worthy document. Though it's far from perfect, by the time I finally got it into a presentable state, it was time for lunch break. After working non-stop for hours, I was utterly exhausted, and combined with a sense of relief, I felt my hunger. I searched my bag, then remembered, today of all days, I didn't have my lunch box. In the rush of the morning, I had completely forgotten, but today was special. As I nervously waited at the visitor's entrance, I saw a figure running towards me, arms full of packages. Dad, 
Sorry for keeping you waiting. It took longer than I expected, but I'm not too late, am I? It's fine. I just went on lunch break. Thank you very much. Out of breath, carrying the lunchbox, was my daughter, Katie. Since becoming a university student, she started making her own lunches. Jokingly, I asked, could you make one for me too? And she agreed. Ever since, I've been bringing her homemade lunches to work daily, and her cooking, further honed by attending cooking classes, has significantly improved. Today, she was bringing a lunch made in her cooking class, time to coincide with my lunch break. As I was about to return to the office with a lunchbox in my bag, a familiar voice reached my ears. Hello, and who might this be? Hello, Kent, I replied. As Kent, returning from a long cigarette break, assessed Katie and me. Disliking the way he appraised Katie, I responded with forced calmness. You two have never met. This is my daughter, Katie, who just started university this year. Hello, my father always speaks highly of you. Katie greeted politely. The moment Kent realized the woman before him was my daughter, he smirked. I see, you're Max's daughter. Your dad must be tired at home too, right? He leaves work on time almost every day despite being slow at it. I worry he can't sleep well because his brain work home, given his poor progress at the office. Katie, perhaps too offended to respond, averted her eyes from Kent without saying a word. I wanted to retort. But of course, I lacked the courage, having never considered myself competent at work. Feeling pathetic for my inability to respond. Katie's displeasure seemed to prompt Kent to change his approach. By the way, I saw you receiving something earlier. What did you get? A lunchbox. My daughter made it and brought it for me. Is that so? I've heard you've been bringing homemade lunches daily recently. So, here's my request. Kent beckoned me over. Could you please eat your lunch outside from now on? Honestly, it smells and is disrupting work. I'd tolerate it if it were just me. But other employees have complained too. As their manager, I can't just ignore it, right? I'm sorry, but please. Kent whispered this, pretending it was difficult to say. The volume was clearly adjusted so Katie could hear. I'm sorry for the intrusion. I'll be leaving now, Katie said. Her face contorting briefly before biting her lip and walking away. Seeing Katie's nearly tearful expression, usually so spirited, pained me deeply. She must have held back, knowing him being my boss. I felt even more pathetic. I'd explained to her that Kent's remarks were baseless lies when I got home. With that thought, I opened the door Kent had entered through. At my desk, I placed my bag down and took a moment. I wanted to open the lunchbox right away, but I had a prior engagement and couldn't eat just yet. Deciding to use the restroom first, I left my belongings and stepped out. Only a few minutes had passed, but upon returning, a shocking scene unfolded. Next to my desk, in the trash bin, was the lunchbox Katie had brought. Discarded and emptied, not the container I usually use. I couldn't remain silent, raising my voice. Who did this? Who would do such a thing? My colleague, without saying anything, gave me a meaningful look. It seemed to be one of Kent's pranks. Kent, why would you do this? It was made with so much effort. This is too much. I clenched my fists tightly and questioned Kent. Kent responded with apparent amusement. Too much, you say. That's my line. Didn't I tell you? Please eat your homemade lunches outside. Yet, you brought them inside. It smells. So I threw it in the trash, Kent said. His word leaving me stunned beyond anger. You're finished, I said. What? Who do you think you are talking to? And what do you mean by finished? Before I could answer, Kent suddenly looked as if he had come to an understanding. Indeed, such a smelly and an appetizing lunch shouldn't have just been thrown in the trash. I should have wrapped it in newspaper and plastic. The omelette with spring onions smells and looks bad. 
What a blunder on my part. Kent said, laughing loudly. Before I could think of how to explain, the person I had an appointment with appeared. Sorry to interrupt your fun conversation, Max. Has the promised item arrived? I've been looking forward to it since it's been a while and worked hard today, said the director, Ray, standing behind me. Noticing Ray, Kent hurriedly stood up. Ray, how are you? What brings you here? Kent seemed puzzled by Ray's presence, as they usually didn't spend lunch breaks together, let alone work in the same room. Actually, I had something for Max. I promised to have lunch with him today. Why with Max? Ray scratched his head, looking embarrassed. Well, it's a long story. Come on, Max, let's go to the cafeteria. About that, Ray. As I began to speak, Kent glared at me. He must have been uneasy about what I would say, but of course, it was impossible to keep it hidden. My daughter brought two lunches earlier, but Kent threw one in the trash. I still have mine in my bag, though it's not ideal. Would you mind eating that one instead? Ray glanced at the trash can I pointed to, and his previously calm expression dramatically changed. There, he saw familiar lunchbox and food. Facing Kent, Ray spoke solemnly. Kent, is what he said true? Did you treat his lunch this way? Wait, Ray. Kent scrambled for an excuse. Max has been bringing his lunch every day, and several employees complained about the smell. I don't know how his daughter prepares it, but you can see, right? The omelet with spring onions even smells rotten, and the other food isn't edible. Eating it would have been bad for your health, Ray. It's almost a good thing it was thrown away. Kent, unknowing, only made things worse with his excuses. Ray, seething with anger, spoke with dignity. What do you think food is, even if it were your own? This is someone's lunch. Making something for someone means it's filled with unseen sentiments. I can hardly believe someone who doesn't understand that can put heart into their work. Promoting you to manager, I need to reconsider if it was the right decision. Kent vehemently objected, his face reddening. Wait, I take pride in my work ethic and don't fall short to anyone. It's absurd to equate this incident with my work performance. Indeed, I threw away the lunch to improve the workplace environment. The method may have been poor, and I'll be mindful in the future. However, Max also needs guidance for bringing in sanitary lunches. Ray appeared dismayed at Kent's attempt to still paint me as the culprit. Let me say this, it's impossible that Max's lunch was insanitary or improperly made. How can you be so sure? Kent leaned forward, skeptical of Ray's confidence. Max's daughter, Katie, attends the cooking class my wife runs. Of course, my wife has food and hygiene certifications, and today's lunch was made there. Are you suggesting my wife manages ingredients carelessly or cooks improperly? To disparage the vegetables we grow in our garden is also disappointing. Ray explained, causing Kent's face to pale. Yet, Kent bit back, not learning his lesson. Ray, you're not suggesting I get demoted and he gets promoted, right? I won't forget this conversation. Mixing personal and professional matters like this, if it influences HR decisions, I'll sue. Ray responded firmly. Of course, there's no mixing of personal and professional matters. Since we've gone this far, let's lay everything out. Keeping things hidden won't satisfy anyone. Ray then shared his personal circumstances with Kent. As their child became a working adult, Ray and his wife spent more time together, it leading to more trivial arguments and a deteriorating relationship. After stopping the daily tradition of making him homemade lunches to to petty fights, Ray sought to improve their marriage. Learning that my daughter attended cooking classes, I and Katie were asked by Ray to make this request. To learn how to make packed lunch at that cooking class. To bring two packed lunches to my workplace. Katie was to tell Ray's wife that she wanted to eat with me, making one packed lunch herself and the other by Ray's wife. 
Accepting this request gladly, Katie and I executed a plan today. Originally, we were supposed to eat the packed lunches made by Katie and Ray's wife together. After hearing the story, Kent snorted and said, I understand the situation. I get why you are furious about the packed lunches being thrown away, but you are mixing personal and work matters. Right. Even during breaks, it's important to maintain some focus for work efficiency. I can believe someone who can take their job seriously is in a position of authority. Kent seemed completely unapologetic, now openly criticizing both me and Ray. Even during break time, another employee rushed over in a flurry. Ray, I've been looking for you. Sorry to disturb your break, but there's been a complaint call demanding a manager. Given the nature of the complaint, I've put them on hold. Losing trust is fatal for a community-focused company like ours. Please, we need you to handle this. After a brief explanation, Ray took the handset to deal with the call. His expression darkened as he listened. Glancing at me and Kent while apologizing over the phone, Ray seemed troubled. Wondering what had happened, it seemed the call finally ended. What were you doing this morning? At Ray's words, filled with anger, I straightened my back. I was fully occupied making documents for this afternoon's performance improvement meeting, as instructed by Kent. Why were you doing that? It's Kent's job. Plus, the meeting isn't today. It's next week, and I was asking about your whereabouts this morning, Kent, Ray clarified. Realizing the documents weren't needed today and the anger wasn't directed at me, I sighed in relief. In contrast, Kent was visibly sweating. This morning, I was visiting our clients. Building relationships with the local community is also an important part of our work. That's strange, murmured Ray. Then, he spoke as if admonishing a child who had done wrong. I need you to be honest. What were you really doing this morning? I was visiting our clients. That's enough. Ray cut him off to explain about the phone call. Someone driving our company car was seen leaving a casino in a bad mood, smoking in a non-smoking area, and even littering. They were berated when they pointed it out. Does this ring a bell? Kent, clearly shaken, avoided Ray's gaze and shook his head. Well, the caller remembered the face and the license plate. We can see who it was from the parking lot footage, and the drive recorder would have caught their face. Interestingly, they also mentioned the brand of cigarette, which coincidentally matches the one in your pocket. Since we don't know who it is yet, I'll go apologize instead. I'll find out who it was. Ray said before leaving the room, apologizing to me for the packed lunch issue, even though it wasn't his fault. Kent briefly looked like he wanted to stop Prey, but ended up just standing there dumbfounded. Eventually, it was confirmed that Kent was the one at the casino, and after being shown the drive recorder footage, he had no choice but to admit it. Unfortunately for Kent, the person he had yelled at was a valued client, making his actions a significant issue within the company. Kent ended up resigning, not just being demoted, bringing peace back to the office. Meanwhile, I was promoted to manager after HR recognized my consistent work performance. Ray congratulated me, insisting his influence had nothing to do with it. Regardless, I felt even more motivated at work. For my promotion celebration, I was invited to Ray's house. Ray's home, filled with his wife's love, was a newly built mansion designed to also serve as a cooking class venue. Katie was invited along with me for the occasion, and the four of us, including Ray and his wife, gathered around the table. The evening was lively, especially with Katie's sociable nature. Ray, this omelet is the best, isn't it? Perhaps influenced by the alcohol, Ray was in an exceptionally good mood. His cheeks flushed as he spoke. Jer, yeah, there's nothing as delicious as this in the world. Katie's future husband will be so lucky to eat such tasty food every day. I wonder if saying this makes her dad sad. While Ray said and laughing joyfully, Katie responded with a smug expression. Oh, Ray, 
This omelet was made by your wife. You're the lucky one, eating such delicious meals every day. Really, to not recognize the taste of my cooking. From tomorrow, I'll have to include your favorite omelet in a packed lunch again, Ray's wife said, looking pleased. Seeing Ray's wife happy, both Ray and I smiled. Katie might not have known, but there was no way Ray couldn't recognize his wife's omelet. I dislike green onions, while Ray loves this green onion-filled omelet made by his wife. Ray, how about we swap our packed lunches tomorrow? I suggested. Trying to hide his embarrassment, Ray responded to my proposal. No, I love my wife's packed lunches more than anything. It's a nice offer, but I'll stick to my own, he said. I remembered the look on Ray's face when he realized his favorite omelet had been thrown in the trash. It's hard to imagine the extent of his anger at that moment. Now, Ray's expression was the complete opposite of what it was then. Not just that. Everyone around the table wore a gentle expression 